Okay, welcome everyone to this uh, session. And this, uh, this is the last session of the day, and this is the last session of the conference. So uh, I'm very honored to, 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 to uh, chair this session. And uh, the topic is uh, post quantum encryption. We will have three talks. The first talk will be by Andrea Passo, and uh, talking to us about test, which is a great topic. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Andrea, I'm the University of Bristol. And today I'm going to be talking about our recent work on developing uh, a new identity based PKE for the best app, which means part in Italian, but it also stands for Fast Encryption from Super Secret. And just as a heads up, the task is mostly exploration. This is a joint work together with John Maino and John Mungo, both of the University of Bristol. So, if you take a look at identity based encryption for the longest time, the state was like this. We had two protocols, SAD and side, and nearly every um, identity based encryption protocol was some kind of unification of this. SAD, which relied on uh, using all possible super secret level curves, but also had to deal some additional um, information in order to make sure the protocol was correct. And the uh, C side, on the other hand, which restricted itself to a subset of all possible curves, um, but also had to reveal less information about the secret. And the, the, the state of identity based encryption dramatically changed last year. When a series of three breakthrough papers by Cassie Petru, Maino, Martindeo, Danny Pope, Veselowski, and then Robert, SIDH was broken. And the way that this was achieved was that these three papers managed to use some advanced mathematical tools to build a box that looks something like this. This box has some very specific inputs that they asked for, namely, who are the curves E0 E1? The degree of an identity by drop E0 to E1, and then two points P Q on the circle curve E0, and their images under that secret identity by on E1. And if you can provide all this information to the box, the box fits out wow, basically. And this theory breaks as I case because um, the input is precisely the type of information that we have um, in an SNDH public key. Which means that this box, given a public key, can cover the associated secret. But there is more to this attack or this technique. Mainly two things. One, these are extremely efficient algorithms. These are not just some attack that you can eventually run on a computer and hope that it uh, breaks the same age in a matter of years. This runs for that in a matter of minutes, not seconds. And secondly, well, this Initially, it broke SIDH, and that was the, the biggest news. It, in some sense, had a more profound effect. And it quite practically changed our understanding of identity based crypto and what is possible, what problems are easy and efficient to solve, and what are not. And um, if we combine these two things together, then um, we basically obtain that we add a new tool to our toolbox that we can use to uh, do all sorts of constructive and destructive um, things and identity based with them. So, the goal of this uh, project was to look at this new uh, techniques that were recently introduced and rather than use them to attack existing protocols, we wanted to use them in a constructive manner to try to um, build a new encryption. And to do that, we had to work on final in some sense. Because on one end, we wanted to um, make sure that the protocol that we were going to propose is 
secure. So we didn't want to reveal too much information so that uh, anyone could just use the same algorithm and recover the secret key. But at the same time, we wanted to have the two parties work together in such a way that we can um, want to just obtain the input of uh, that uh, algorithm so that they can fit the box and use the box as an encryption algorithm. And to do that, we had to introduce a new assumption. So in this case, we had something like this. You get a secret that's not unified, two points B0 to B0, and then you reveal their scale limits. And as you see, this is uh, this is broken, this is insecure because the not unified is really revealed by the box limits. So what we propose to do is instead scale the points B0 and B0 by two random speakers, which hides this. And while this seems like a very small modification, it turns out it's uh, quite fundamental and um, particular because if before you reveal the images of exponentially many subgroups of a specific order, now we're running the views. So the amount of information that we're revealing about the result in five is much, much less. And one thing to note though is that because we do have some varying information leakage, an attacker is always able to recover the product between alpha and beta, so we can simply modify this to have the product be one, so that we reduce the number of variables from alpha to alpha. And this is extremely useful for our construction because of a particular problem. Let's say that one party starts and it turns out they and reveals their scaled images just as we see. Then a second party can come along, compute a new result inside. And also take these two points that they got uh, one maybe one and reveal their scale image under a new scalar. And now, unlike previous uh, identity structures, we don't really need any kind of relationship between um, by and side. Maybe just they have full prime order, but they don't have to be related in any meaningful way. And if you do this, because of the mathematical structure of our trees, we have a this this both. So a blind side that goes on the if you want it to be one and scale by beta is the same as mapping the initial point P0 to 0 under the composition isogeny, under um side composition point and scaling by the product alpha. Which means that if the first part it then sees this output and computes a new third isogeny sigma, again this it should have no bearing, no relationship with pi. And scales the point that the region we had with the same the inverse of alpha, which is to scale the first point. What happens is that, again, for the same property, the alpha cancels out. So these points down here are the images of P0 and P0 under the composition of all three isogenies while being scaled by the entire inverse. And this is what we want. Because now this means that after these three steps, a person who knows beta can remove the scaling and obtain the exact images of P0 and P0 under the composition itself. So then this can be fed in the SIDH attack algorithm to recover the composition of three isotopes, including five sigma that the group are originally not known. And this is exactly how the Alcasta looks like. So we first build a chapter function and then we go to a chapter function for the page. The idea is that to generate our public parameters, we do exactly what we just We fix some P0, P0, and a curve, and then compute a randomized result in one, we build our still images. And now the two points P0, P0, the curve they lie on, the points P, A, P, A, and the curve they lie on. For the public parameters of our function. Then the input of the function is three things two isogenies, uh, time and sigma, starting from the left curve and the right curve respectively, and a scaling value. And to evaluate this structure function, we compute the isogenic sign, we, and we reveal the points uh, P0, P0 scaled under uh, beta and map to the side. We do the same thing on the right side where we take sigma from the right curve, we, and then we compute the points uh, P2, P2 by mapping P8 under sigma and scaling by theta. And this 
everything that we see on the bottom basically constitutes the output of the graph. So we have p1, p1, p2, and the curve that I have on is the output of the graph function. And it's the assumption that uh, I've seen, I showed you before about scaling the different value zones. Uh, this is a part of one way function. However, it's still possible to recover the input if somebody knows the traffic information alpha, the scaling value alpha. The reason for that is if you look at the composition result, the green arrow going from the very left curve to the very right curve, what we get is that the images of P1 and P1 under this screen horizontally is given by something like this. So and it only depends on P2, which is belongs to the input or the output of the output function, belongs on some fixed cost that there is a public uh, parameter, and it depends on alpha. So this means that if you know the chapter alpha, you can convert scale P2 to P2 to obtain the exact images of P1P1 under the green exogeny, fit this to the SMDH attack box, obtain a representation of uh, the green exogeny from which it's easy to recompute sigma, psi, and beta. So they think it's beta. So we now have a chapter function from which you can fairly easily obtain a PP. The main requirement that we have here is that we want this not just to be a one-way function, but we want to be a partial three which means that extracting one of the three inputs is as hard as um, extracting the entire input. And uh, this is precisely the case because we can show that even any one of those three inputs um, is fairly efficient, efficient to recover uh, all the other two. And because it's a partial domain function, function, we can then apply the OAP transform, which was initially studied in the context of RSA, to obtain uh, PK that is insisted to secure in the new law. And the transform looks something like this. The particular details don't matter too much, but it basically involves just adding up two hash functions, so it doesn't um, affect the efficiency of the scheme. And particularly because we start from a structural function, we don't need the structure model for us to obtain CCA security, which means we don't need to re enter the capacity. Okay. Now that we see the high level framework, we can dive into a little bit of how we particularly implement this. And this basically corresponds to um, finding the best setting, the best environment where the SSH attacks can be purely efficient. And as I mentioned, these SSH attacks were proposed in a series of three papers, which differ in how they approach. And um, you can maybe identify two categories of attacks. Those that work in dimension two and those that work in dimension four or even five. And this takes some um, different characteristics. In particular, we see that the attacks in dimension two um, have a fairly simple implementation, which also means they can be quite efficient, but then they pose some very, very strict requirements on the degrees of all the exogenies and the orders of the points that we're dealing with. Whereas on dimension four and higher, we kind of have the opposite. The requirements on the degrees are much more lax, but at the same time, the implementation is a lot more complex, which also means it's much, much slower to, um, to compute. And um, in particular, we have to work with both the dimension for a text, we would have a very compact PKE. Um, so the, the product that we would be dealing with is uh, about 400 bits, not less, which means it would even be more uh, complicated compact is the oldest at age. And it would also mean to have a very fast and efficient key generation encryption, but the encryption would be extremely slow. So for that reason, we decided to go for dimension two so that we can have a more balanced approach. What we have is, however, that we pay a price for this and um, our pride has to go up to uh, 1,300 bits, um, but then we get some practical running times for um, and we'll see what the practical means in a moment, but uh, practical just uh, means that uh, it's computer. Right. Um, okay. One more slide on how to find uh, more counters. Now that we decide that we want to stick to dimension two, we have to find a way to satisfy this uh, strict um, computer power. And first of all, the complexity of the attack 
can be for the decryption algorithm, and can be heavily depends on how the points, uh, the order of the points are representing. And in particular, anything larger than an hour or two is extremely slow. So we had to proceed dealing with the uh, torsion points in a cube of uh, order of power. Then what we see is that in the literature, um, this is the condition that we need to satisfy. The degree of the degree of isogeny um, has to be expressed for as this power to the same that we chose our points by using some constant C that um, it's very simple. So it's actually quite hard to find uh, such uh, such parameters because we also want the degree of degree of isogeny to be smooth in order to make it efficient. Um, but what we noticed was that we could well, we could uh, rephrase this and split our isogeny into um, so that it's somewhat easier to find the parameters and also the key that we're dealing with is that significantly uh, smaller around half of the previous key because now the degree that we're dealing with are about square root of the degrees that uh, the and on top of that um, we also found a way Introduce some more flexibility using scalar distribution, which um, help find the uh, solution. And then, lastly, uh, once we want to solve this type of equation, we develop an ad hoc uh, method that uh, generally relies on the uh, practice algorithm to express uh, integers as uh, some squares to find solution. And what we found is that the new result is those computed during the encryption phase are quite smooth because the call smooth. First, the encryption during each generation is a bit less smooth around the um, But this is not a particular uh, big problem because this is only used during each generation once. So even if each generation is a bit it's not a very important issue. And then we is around, uh, so the order of the point in front is the 600 of two, and the prime is just as important. We, because this uses a very um, new approach, we wanted to implement this product to showcase that it was uh, completely viable, it wasn't just some theoretical construction. And what we obtained is that um, it's a proof of concept implementation in stage map, so highly not optimized. Um, but we still obtained a generation encryption and decryption are all running in a matter of a few seconds. And um, once again, this is a proof of concept implementation. So we can expect a very, very significant uh, improvement just from going with our stage map to a more low level implementation. But also, this deals with uh, a lot of new techniques that have been recently um, proposed, and we can expect uh, major improvements. For instance, there was some recent work that came out after this was a uh, open keyframe that, uh, thanks to some new algorithm to compute the time by audience involved in the SDH attacks. It uh, reduced the friction time by more than five times. Um, so, while these numbers may not be extremely promising or extremely satisfying right now, we can expect a very, very significant um, in the near future. Okay, so just to quickly sum up, we introduced, introduced a whole new uh, framework to um, develop constructive applications of the SIDH tax. We then used this. Type of um, framework to develop a new isogeny based KE. Um, if you remember at the beginning, we showed, we, showed, we see that uh, we only had SIDH and C side, and we even lost SIDH, but then this allows us to introduce a uh, whole new category based on a new uh, fairly conservative assumption. And um, lastly, this is still an infancy, so you have still great uh, potential for improvement, and we are hoping to see. Um, I best construction of that one uh, post from this type of uh, assumption. Thank you very much for your attention. If you're interested, check out the paper on the free or even with uh, our code in the Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have questions from there. Hello, Brian. Thank you for the talk. Uh, just to find out how are there any methods? Are you trying to find new clients? Um, I 
come out there because of this. Yeah, so uh, I mean, the, the, the one in front of the health uh, effects on private issues. Um, so, finding in line with food service specifications would be to a fairly significant terms now. Um, but very recently, there's also been quite some developments and new papers that um, use the same type of uh, construction approach but with different parameters. Where it's uh, much easier to find parameters, but they were also able to um, basically find a more efficient version of the same protocol by sort of sidestepping the issue of parameter finding together. Um, so we'll see how, how things develop, but it might be possible that uh, we won't even have to solve this kind of equations anymore because then there's only a problem. Well, uh, what's the difference between the scaled torsion and the mass torsion? That's a good question. So, um, okay. Well, scaled and mass are some of these. Interchangeably, um, maybe as a community, we should uh, keep one or the other. But uh, we also have something called mass percentage, and in that case, um, we actually let me put that. Um, so originally, we said um, we scale them by altitude, by two independent scalars. And um, what is sometimes done, uh, for instance, in mass percentage, is that instead of two points alpha theta, um, rather than being alpha theta to the scalars, scales, basically all both points by the same scale, like alpha and alpha, which uh, makes some efficiency easier because uh, if you scale both points, then any mirror combination of P1 and P1 is still the image of the same linear combination of P0 to P0 under the same alpha. So that that's a good thing uh, from a security point of view, because uh, as I briefly mentioned, there is some leakage to do while pairing. You can always obtain the product between these two values. So if you take the product of alpha and beta, you don't get much to the alpha and beta are randomly chosen. But if you still by alpha and alpha, and you obtain alpha square, which tends to give a lot of information about alpha. So in order to make it secure, you want that to be enough to go with uh, more than two to alpha square points. Which that means you need to take very large um, parameters. So basically, by scaling my alpha and beta, you can uh, you can deal with uh, the basically you can obtain better parameters and use points that uh, whose order is just a fine power, but you're not having uh, much more Okay, thank you. Okay. So the next speaker is uh, Robert Kastnik, and uh, we about the uh, Vesta, but it's time to attack the Vesta, and it's a bit, please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so yes, uh, so I'll talk about uh, the thanks on very special instances of Musang and Vesta. Uh, this is Dr. Robert Philip Cohen, and my talk was on several, but I'm going to talk to you for that. Um, so, um, Let's first uh, sketch some context. So, uh, Super City and Air City in Milano, in the age of Super City, is competition in round four. It's broken, and I can realize it's broken. I feel like the computer is broken, but it's too much to do. I have to also mention the channel models, I need to remind you there, but they will be using data on the slide, and almost immediately, uh, and the uh, paper looks similar, and actually, uh, I think it approaches this problem, uh, especially if you want to use it for constructive reasons. First, 
in any case, so what was the main reason that this idea is broken? Uh, this is uh, the following, I'm not going to explain this page, but uh, in this is the distortion of information that is being exchanged. So we have a sequence of five from E to B prime. We have uh, the basis of the n of E1 and E2. And you reveal the images of the basis points in the isosceles, and that allows you to break uh, the scheme. And so uh, the modeling view on this attack, and so uh, we have this nice uh, like box there. Um, this statement here is a little bit stronger, and that's thanks to some epsilon that was added here. Is it in this here? Or this here, sorry. Um, so this is uh, the approach taken by uh, Martin Martindale, and we did that with Fanny, Pope, and Wisolowski, and then the yellow bag kind of uh, took it to the next level. So there is an polynomial time algorithm for isogeny in the coefficient. So that's, uh, that's how you should think of it. So if you have an isogeny phi, which you don't know, but you know the degree, and you know how it acts on a certain subgroup, and if that subgroup is big enough, more than 40 points, and if the order of that subgroup is smooth, then we can uh, efficiently evaluate the phi. So this is there's a subgroup in the non-super single case that we have. This is what we are now. Um, and so uh, we'll uh, get back to that. Uh, but let's first uh, have a look at the first uh, scheme that was mentioned uh, in the factor, and that is this mass SIH, the last question. Uh, so, mass SIH was proposed by Ms. and and this year, or um, well, April 9 last year, I guess. Um, and the key observation is that if you look at the design of SIDH, so why are these torsion points being exchanged? That's to make a certain diagram of the uh, but to allow uh, the ensemble to meet. And if you look at what is needed for that, well, actually, it suffices that uh, you reveal the images of these torsion points up to some unknown scale. But the common unknown scale is about the big Casta, so give the A. Uh, So here is A. Sorry, okay. So the secret scale of A has to be the same in both components, and that SIDH still works. The problem is that the security immediately reduces to the case by A squared to one. Okay, so if N is for instance a big prime, there's not so much secret about it anymore. Uh, so you need to have a modulus N, modulus which there are very many use of one. And that's true of uh, many, many prime factors. Uh, in any case, this is a side of mark, not so important for us. But the goal of this counter measure is to uh, exclude this interpolation attack to it. So the interpolation attack no longer applies because we no longer have the exact images, but maybe we do. Uh, well, in the disguise, maybe we do. And this was already observed by the uh, works and the young people themselves uh, in their paper. Uh, maybe what you can do is uh, if E comes with a small endomorphism, the sigma, then you can consider this uh, what is known, uh, what we get to be known as a low endomorphism. So you first apply uh, phi hats, so you go from E prime to E, you first apply phi hats, then you apply sigma, and then you return using phi. Now let's have a look at what happens if we apply that composed map to P1 and P2, uh, P1 prime and P2 prime. I won't go into the full details of this for uh, the sake of time, but if you work out what happens, um, then you will actually see that this uh, A, yeah, which is uh, like included in both the selection, is cancelled. And so you will know the exact images of the one time and the two time under this composition by composites. So there's no dependency on A anymore. And so this means that we are now in position to apply the uh, attacks, at least if these requirements on the degree are met. And so we want the torsion to be big enough. Uh, maybe, ah, so it does work. Uh, so if n is uh, big enough, which in this case means bigger than two times b times square root of the degree of sigma, so this means that the number of sigma should not be too big. And this allows for an efficient evaluation of this composed isogeny. And if this composed isogeny is cyclic, say, that's the, that's the best thing. So, if you can that, it's still sufficient 
and you can read off of those two numbers. Okay, so this was already uh, present in the works of the Antipathy. So the conclusion is anti distinctive view that there exists a small amount of the market, and this is the concrete bounds of the statistics part. So that's easy to avoid uh, if you just walk to uh, an analytic purpose that comes from the very small in the market in your work. Your, your but if you're out of mind, you can even just set that for a minute with an unknown homomorphism ring, and then this will be just So now what do we have to add to that? Uh, so this is our first contribution. So this is our main conclusion for MSI. Uh, if it is possible and feasible to find an endomorphism sigma uh, on E, or an endomorphism sigma on E prime, or, and this is the new part, an isogeny from E to its previous conjugate, or the other part at the E prime side, an isogeny from E prime to its previous conjugate, satisfying this bound, then M is also insecure. And the most interesting uh, example of this is where your starting curve E is defined for SP. Your starting curve E is defined for SP, then E and E prime and, uh, and its Fabini's conjugate are just isochronic. And so for sigma, you can take your and so it would be there as one, so that's a good representation. So if E or E prime are defined by the And uh, this just follows from a tweak. Already towards our geography. This is the symmetry is small application. So this is uh, the so um, it's the, the idea is just a tweak of the uh, lollipop morphism. So this is the lollipop ring. So what we do is we squeeze from this. Uh, so now we have E, we have E prime, uh, and we have the Frobenius conjugates. And instead of doing the lollipop, we go uh, using uh, phi hat to E. Then we apply this isogeny to the previous conjugate sigma, and then we refer uh, with, um, with uh, the, the conjugate of uh, the isogeny phi. And then, uh, yeah, so this is the definition of the conjugate. This is a rule that you need want to verify this uh, with skip this. But in any case, the bottom line is again that the secret scalar A uh, will disappear. And so you again have uh, this uh, larger isogeny, uh, which is. Um, yeah, uh, under which you know the images of P1 are So this scalar is So that's uh, that's as far as thinking goes. Now let's uh, go to Festa. Uh, so you could try to apply the same idea to Festa, and you already said that it doesn't work uh, nicely, but there's still something you just need to say. So Festa, uh, as uh, one of you just explained, is based on a, a variation of this uh, mask SIDH idea, where instead of scaling uh, P1, uh, uh, scaling the images of P1 and P2 uh, by the same common scalar, you multiply P1 and P2 with the matrix. Okay? Uh, so uh, if you use a diagonal matrix, um, you are exactly uh, seeing what they explained. Um, this is an uh, M side case, but in general, you could. Uh, more uh, general matrix, but for uh, as a uh, this matrix should be sampled from a community. Yeah, so this is the really community group of matrices that exist for examples. Uh, actually, in an appendix for paper, we people like the partial classification groups, side notes, um, and there's a general similar demand using the relative matrix to produce two matrices of determinant one, but I'll skip that. In any case, what is the main conclusion that we have to offer here? Well, it's very similar. It's exactly the same statement as in the previous case with one important extra condition. So, if it is possible to find the sigma, or uh, in the inomorphic ring of E, or in the inomorphic ring of E prime, or as an isogeny from E to its conjugate, or as an isogeny from E prime to its previous conjugate, that is why the same degree bound, the degree of sigma is uh, smaller than. Square divided by 4 d squared, then you can trade first out if, and this is a very important tip, the matrix uh, sigma, which is essentially the matrix of um, small sigma uh, with respect to uh, or our sigma composed with the uh, dual of the penis matrix, some matrix that really depends on the points P1 and P2, uh, is an element of the matrix. Okay. 
And so the uh, reason is that the previous arguments we need to make use of communication, which is, which is trivial in case of the scale. But as soon as you have a domain of media, for instance, where there is nothing to be communication is no longer applies, unless the uh, And so the other part of the reason for so this is just a small random if you want. Um, yeah. uh, so are there any questions about that? Um, so if not, let's uh, let's analyze this a little bit further. So this statement here belongs very much on the basis. Respect to the issue. In the case of any science, the conclusions are a bit independent of the basis we choose, but this is a big difference with the case of test. Uh, in Pesna, it is possible to choose very bad basis. So we call, we call the basis that we want to do of the inclusion bad if uh, the matrix sigma with respect to the relevance uh, in the world is in here. Um, uh, sorry, this is should. This should not only be with respect to P1 and P2, but also with respect to P1. Uh, that made it, you know, sorry, uh, P1 only with respect to P2. Say, in case of, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm missing this one. It's just one P, sorry, it's not, as I stated. So, uh, we call a basis P1 and P2 bad if it makes uh, sigma and uh, this set uh, of the relevant uh, in the model belongs to this uh, set X. And for instance, in the case of uh, diagonal matrix, if it's a standard choice in uh, PESA, then the basis is that if it consists of uh, eigenvectors, and because in that case the matrix will also be. Um, and in this case, there's a small uh, remark in practice because I'm that's applying the interpolation not to the whole inversion, but to the same. So, um, so what is the likeliness of finding a uh, uh, sigma in endomorphism such that the given basis? Well, that's not really likely. In fact, uh, we only uh, are kind of going to find such a, a sigma as soon as n is very large. And as soon as n is at least three times deep root, which is way larger than the techniques that are used in Presta, uh, then Whatever the basis is, we will be able to find the weak sigma. But then you can also say Presta, in this, this overstretched version of Presta is broken, but it's still confusing in the main. Um, conversely, uh, the proportion of our basis, um, so if you say, like I said, that Presta are in a easy way, uh, so I just take a random basis, what is the probability that you're going to choose a weak basis? Uh, well, that's very small. Okay, so let's say the bottom one here is Festa is fine against these attacks, except if you're very good. So, except if you're doing uh, things like uh, You could also run it and you can create big instances of Festa on purpose using backdoors, but it's easy to do. Okay, so now let's uh, go to the last. Uh, um, uh, slide here, or slide. Uh, what about seaside? Because seaside, in a way, you use say that this is uh, a version of Presta, uh, in the sense that uh, just because of the weird fact that you're considering part of the point over the P, you know that eigenspaces for Venus have to be mapped to eigenspaces for Venus. In other words, if P1 and P2, or whatever level of expression, are such that they have high vectors of the Venus, or they have to be mapped to uh, multiples in the second vector. So, such data is just implicitly revealed uh, in uh, C site or in, uh, in, in the replaced operator by such things more generally. Uh, and uh, yeah, the interesting thing here is that this is true for any many multiple which you have to write in spaces of the Venus, so it can be chosen. Uh, in particular, in this whole stretch of information. Okay, so you might say you're in trouble. Uh, but if you do the analysis, it turns out that uh, it's never works. And the reason is uh, this remark that I said at the beginning, and that I was handling the uh, avoiding bit, 
So if this composite to the five composite signal is sufficiently secret, then you can be over five. Uh, well, uh, here this is number two. Unless you go to a very uh, large number one, but then you want to. So it's actually quite interesting uh, to look at the proof. It really uh, is a very tight distinction. So either you want in this uh, case where you don't know anything, or you run in the situation where you can try. And so it's uh, not that it's totally fine. So again, the conclusions. Inside this insecure, if you're starting to work with the perfect family of P, if the endomorphic ring is known, then overstretched inside is insecure. Uh, and this is the bounds. Overstretched will also be insecure if it comes to the same in practice. But you have this bound problem in the sense of that's what the real risk is. Uh, in general uh, ranges, so the way that's how it's being set up. Uh, really, instances exist, but they are very rare. And uh, moreover, they are easy to detect uh, and also easy to avoid. So, uh, backdoors want to try, but it's going to be circumvent. And you see, so this is so often. So, the twin bit happened. Um, so you showed that the fact doesn't really apply to the C stuff. Um, and can you do, is there any other setting that are like this also doesn't apply? I mean, as in, could you come up with a setting even if it's not really a problem? That is a problem. Uh, yes, so the reason that it doesn't apply is that the file is not random. Is, so if you open it, if you do random accidents in the pool, in the car, then, then they will, and most of those walks will be controlled. Uh, but uh, but the, the thing here is that this uh, I, um, uh, yeah, is, is chosen in, uh, in a two compatible way with the torsion information given. Um, and so we didn't do the exact analysis, but I would guess you end up very close to something to the thing you've done with the boys on this uh, artificial orientation. So, uh, my guess now is that this could be the exact pattern of the but it's certainly easier to do this effect of the response. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. And I guess there's a follow up. Have you looked into whether this sort of applies if you're similar to other five groups? Yes, so it definitely also uh, the same conclusion. But the problem is this proof here is not so trivial. And so um, uh, they only did it in the case of uh, the starting curve, maybe for the standard starting curve for CSAM. Um, but it seems that uh, if you want to do this proof for more general starting curves, uh, then it can judge it for more technical, but it's all the ingredients that it's, it's also applied. And then the same is true for arbitrary or ones. For real time settings, or artificially oriented settings. Thank you very much. I see a question. Thanks for the talk. I couldn't understand where the inequality on the third slide comes from. Third slide. This one. Yeah, that's the last one. Yeah, the other is greater than that. Ah, yeah. So this comes from this bound. So if you know. If you know when I saw the acts on a group of size ah, is okay. 4D, then this fact of 4 is often omitted, okay. uh, but it's actually needed. Well, this fact of 4 is needed to make a distinction between plus plus and minus plus. So you could say the scheme that also grows if you have to be, you know, to have this space that you need a fact of 4. Uh, and so the number of elements in the game is that or D, this means uh, because the n torsion group has n squared elements, n squared should be at least 4D. Uh, and then, uh, okay, 
So n squared should be at least for d, so n should be at least two times square root of d. Uh, but d now has become uh, d squared times sigma. Yeah, because pi is on the degree d, and sigma is on the degree d. Uh, so it's uh, n squared, and n is bigger than two times the square root of d squared. Uh, do you see your your approach like developing in the direction of SIDH torsion point attacks? Like you would have more and more instances like it becomes less and less overstretched parameters for us and MSI? Uh, it's not like this approach, I think. I think we kind of, uh, yeah, I don't see any habits um, uh, using this type of load, but you know, it's. Uh, that would uh, would would work for some other things. So. So that's the artificial one. Uh, um, yeah, we didn't do the analysis. Um, so, I, as I said in my previous question, I think it won't apply. I think it's like fundamentally dual with the same issue that we have at Seaside. But while saying that, on the air, I thought maybe. You should write that out. So that's, yeah, maybe it's, it's worth looking at. So my, my gut feeling says that it will not uh, do anything. Um, but to be honest, we didn't write that in the book. So it's not the research. Yes, you have more things. Please take a moment again. The, the last video of the session, and it uh, was about the uh, fastest rule of intro. Uh, so this is the And our work, our work is faster and smaller than the relationship between macro and body. And true is one of the first practical lab space constructions proposed more than 25 years ago, and it is one of the four big ideas and camps in this use a long story families. However, it was not likely to be standardized in the One of the reason is that it is never the fastest or the smallest. Among all the mapping space and families. Compared to type, entry high speed with 80% number of public keys and sub type cycles, and it is 8 to 45 and slower in key generation. Several efforts have been made to improve the performance of entry. The original scheme still proposed NTTRU for a specific economic rate that supports NTT operations and achieves significant speed up. We went about the standards are here to other entity friendly rates of the same form, and they apply error revision transformations to obtain three revision and true designs into A, B, and C with flexible parameter choices. Despite the efficiency improvement, the size of 
NCIU and NCA are still up in the top of UV, uh, uh, in the level of fiber at the same levels. So, we are going to be all of proposal that we strategically like inclusion and inclusion paradigm over the power of two cyclotomic grid that has the smallest size of all the land space types. It also enjoys fast encapsulation and insulation as fiber and then true, but still suffers from a relatively slow degeneration of fiber and then We present today a faster and smaller intro encryption using background decoding over the power of tools and economic rate. We encode each tune tax speed to the, uh, into the most significant bits of multiple coefficients of message per log and use a vector noise coefficients to decode each attack speed. Where in the original intro encryption, print text are encoded to the least significant bits of message per log. And we also use partial entity modifications, reversions, and pre-compute the reversion table to accelerate our speed. We can, this helps us reduce the size of Q, we have a typical reasonably divisible DPU video and achieves faster implementation. By applying a full transformation, we can obtain this is a secure path. And more concretely, for small modulus Q equals to 769. The this level one secure the uh, security net achieves happy size sub size is of 650 bytes with decryption failure less than or equal to 2 to the power minus 178. For this level five security, our name achieves happy size and sub size is of 1,829 bytes with decryption failure less than or equal to 2 to the power minus 150. It is 33 to 48. Percent more compact than in true, and is one percent more compact than in In the round trip type of the ordering uh, exchange, then is five to twenty nine times faster than in true, and is one point four to one point seven times faster than in We also present the name graph with better noise tolerance, smaller decrypting failure, and slightly better uh, efficiency than they. Uh, it is based on a very real of problem with all its success of parity in the way or SST in the way in short. We show SST in the way problem is another equivalent to the decision of the company. They've found to achieve small different failure, less than or equal to the power minus standard, and both different levels, and uh, to be the same um, small public sizes and set type sizes. Now we will introduce two analysis assumptions for intro decryption. First is consider of intro assumption. It based on the portion of two randomly chosen small polynomial and G in super random. Second is real the assumption. It based on it is hard to recover E from H and H R plus E, where H is uniformly random and R E are random small random chosen small polynomials. For original intro decryption, the uh, terminology is simple. For some small initial p, which is typically to three for binary entities, and small binary entities, output to public p h equals to p times g over n, and p is simply p and n t. For decryption, compute c equals to h times r plus n, and for decryption, first compute u equals to n times c, for q, and then recover n by by computing the inverse of f times u of p. To simplify the decryption procedure, f is group set at the form of f equals to p times f prime plus 1, uh, such that the inverse of f mod p equals to 1. Therefore, decryption will have the form u equals to p to r plus p times f prime times f m. So there are then two main reasons why the initial decryption as larger public keys and some text sizes that is going to be based on. Firstly, the decrease noise with p equals to 3 is in true is 1.5 times larger than that of its real only based counterpart, where p is equals to 2 is typically used. Secondly, with the first only chosen back to normal message app, the noise from g and prime may be utilized in a decryption video because uh, 
the, the knowledge of P and M is a type of uh, also the same magnitude as P and T and star. So the naive way to keep big trivial narrows more into the increase Q, which will increase the size of public keys and suspect sizes by our weakness the security of the scheme. Our main idea is using the latex decoding and vector decoding mechanism to increase the noise tolerance of the intro and decrease the deep frame video. Our construction crucially relies on the power of two side economic rate, where the landline for the view is x to the power of n plus one, where a to the power of two. We found that the small polynomial v equals to one minus x to the power of n over k and the nice inverse polynomial with inverse. Which is equal to q plus 1 over 2 times 1 plus x to the power n over k to x to the power k minus 1 times n over k. And we, we replace this small integer t in n2 with this small polynomial v and using the inverse of v as our thin type encoding polynomial. Uh, first, to note that uh, the polynomial m only has its uh, non zero binary coefficients and the first n minus n over k coefficients. So, uh, the inverse of v times m essentially copies t times first n over p coefficients of m to the n coefficients. Let's see the comparison between n trial and n. The public key generation is almost the same. We simply replace the small integer p to a small polynomial v. And for encryption uh, of n, the subtext equals to h times r plus e plus the inverse of v times m, where h r plus e is a ring of these something. And uh, for increment of n true, we can find that n true equal to the thin text into the least related bits of the coefficients of a message phenomenon, but uh, they encode each thin text bit into the most significant bits of multiple coefficients of the message phenomenon. And then finally, in the deep print process, we can Use a vector of noise coefficients to decode to each syntax bit. And now we will clarify that this slight modification will not require a stronger and true assumption. Firstly, the use of small polynomial v equals x plus 2 is was already recommended by the authors of the true as early as the year of 2000, and it was investigated for years. Secondly, the proof of the public uniformity. It depends on the properties of the distributions of time and t. And the currently concrete security estimation also only cares about the distributions of g and m, where v is public to know and be Now we come to the noise analysis. The main reason that we can uh, obtain really of this thing, you know, uh, if you're familiar with various models, you, uh, is as follows. First, the contribution of GR is much less than that of V times M times T. And the size of M times M is much smaller than that of GR. Because M only has non zero memory coefficients and first n over P. And thirdly, the magnitude of the major noise per V M from E is at least a square two times smaller than that of using P equal to 2 to 3 or to X to the power of X plus 3. And finally, the use of vector decoding will lower the different failure and got the key times to the exponents. And since the basic app only has non zero binary coefficients at first and for PBs, but it is more robust to the intricate failure of that. Now we're going to uh, optimize the map. And um, since when using PK as a map, that should be randomly chosen and not necessarily going in class. So, and merge the sampling of intuition noise and random section P in a single step. And we present the map. For each generation, for random small polynomial step prime such that F equals to F time plus the inverse of V uh, is evaporably on Q and of public P H as G over F and keep secret P G and F. For intuition, we want to sample X is C equals to H R plus D for random small polynomial step. RMD. For decryption, we output we compute E equals to F and C and for vector decoding A bring out M. For decryption, uh, U equals to F times C and we line the V bar equals to 1 plus X to the power 
and over P, so next to our P minus one times T over P. And we have E0 log equals to V1 times T log two. Then we will have two times T1 equals to V1 plus T times T2. This is a nice feature of, uh, of V and V inverse. We can finally have that U equals to GR plus F times T plus T1 plus Q plus one over two times E0. Zero is V1 times T log two. So we will not M be a problem that equals to the first n over T is uh, E0, and it is easy to check that E0 is essentially a problem for which of is T and the first n over T coefficient of M of the n coefficient. Therefore, we can use vector to the A to our message M. So often, uh, since A is your M, we have to convert it into a uh, um, Name up into really square M or equivalent maybe of Stimo 2 is determined uh, before the company E. So we can easily achieve this goal by using the normal unit knowledge distribution D. For example, when theta equals to 1 and k is equal to 2, we can import a random fit these up with examples from V1. First, we might to choose V1, V2, V3 from the random reset. And set E0 equals to this R X or E1 X E2 X or E3. And also with E0 as E0 minus E1 and E1 equals to E2 minus E3. It is easy to check that E0 plus or minus E1 or 2 equals to E0 and this R. And E0 E1 follows the distribution of E1, this R is under. Now we turn to the combination with the true and the negative and negative time. We can see from this figure that the true and the negative and the negative prime and the same public P4, where the small letter P is replaced with small superpower new B, and they also have the same intrusion point. For left and left prime, we can see from the figure that the noise term of left prime is very much smaller than left prime. This is the reason that we can achieve uh, smaller bigger than left prime. To improve the security of the ground, we need to introduce a value of the of the problem in the following such as some parity with the lead or SST rather than in short. It is hard to complete V equal to from some fixed ring element V given a real to be tolerant symbol. This name comes from the fact that the ice coefficient of V equal to is essentially equal to the parity of the such as sum of the coefficient value. The proof is simple. If there is a big probabilistic probability time horizon A solving the SSP of the problem with probability equivalent to 1, then there is another probabilistic probability time horizon B time solving this decision rate. For well, the decision rate of the H and B equals to each R plus D1, A time can convert it into an SSP rate of the instance, where H prime equals to 2 times H and B prime equals to equals to 2 times B plus E0 with some noise from E0. Since V times the, uh, the sum of 2 times E1 plus E0 equals to V times E0 over 2, then by running horizon A with input each time P prime, we can obtain some value of W. And, uh, and the and the and B prime can return Y if W equals to V times E0 over 2, and otherwise we can if HP is a real, this is a real of this and any PPT SSP real of this will be the W equals to V times T zero or two with high probability. If HP is randomly chosen, H prime and P prime is also randomly distributed, and the adversary has no information. Now we turn to the performance of our scheme. We present two parameter sites for data and data prime, aiming at this level one and now five security. For the one system, our name achieves sometimes studies and public studies of 650 device. And for this level 5 security, our name can achieve 1,999 bytes. Both scheme achieves reasonably small interpretability. When compared with extension and time, for this level 1 security, our name can achieve 21% more compact than ever. And the service three to 45% more compact than usual. 
it is also 1.4 to 1.6 times faster than fiber, and 5 to 90 times uh, faster than industry. For this level of security of the actually um, 21% of our actual than fiber, and 63 to 48% of our actual It is also 1.6 to 1.7 times faster than fiber, and 24 to 29 times faster than industry. We also obtain figures for fiber and this fiber and industry and this level three security and the value of our We can find that our level and the level of security is 8% larger than that of fiber, but it is 1.2 times faster. And it is also uh, almost the same and even slightly more compact than the industry, with 4 to 11 times faster in speed. When compared with other research designs, we can find that for this level of security, our name is 28% more compact than Entry A, and it is 90% larger than the but to achieve 140 to 973 and faster. But uh, as for this level of security, our name is 28% more compact than Entry A, and it is only 9% larger than that of that, but with um, with greater than 74 to 2048 times faster than speed. And our net and this level of security is slightly more compact than that of the NTPI U with 178 feet. So, for conclusion, we created today faster and smaller initial detergent with the vector coding and the cheese service rate to 48 percent more compact than the two. And the Five to twenty nine uh, times faster than it. It also achieves twenty one percent more compact than fiber and is one point four to one point seven times faster than fiber. This is it all? Thanks for watching. Thank you. Questions? I think we will give some. I have a question about your direction of how to find parameters for the level P. This is due to the specific structure? Yes, this is due to the underlying polynomial. It's a second or two second level P. So there is a large gap between like down and the one thousand. So we cannot find a proper parameter set for this allows reason. Thank you for the talk. I had a question about how you estimate the bit security of uh, the speed. So you said that you uh, have a somewhat new assumption. So I was wondering if the bit security estimates follow directly to this. And uh, what type of analysis can you consider when going to this? They should use a new assumption for some sort of sum and prevent the big problem. And uh, they, uh, maybe this, this can be uh, a generalized version of some new uh, assumption for the real number 32 proposed by Iguna. And uh, the real number 32 assumption is that it is hard to recover E for the two uh, from a real number cutoff. And this is a generalized version that we. Uh, where well, we equals to one. And we estimated the security of our access given the leap from uh, assumption uh, by using the uh, by, uh, by using the algorithm as a major and uh, uh, simply uh, think of it as uh, the same as the real the assumption with the same algorithm. See any more questions? So please uh, speak to me. And this uh, concludes our session. So I'd like to thank again all the speakers in the session and following for attending this. <laughs>